Today we're going to talk about my favorite herbal antibiotics for SIBO. Hey, it's Dr. Shelley Meyer and welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming back if you're returning and thanks for being here. If it's your first visit, I talk about functional medicine topics including mostly gut health, hormone health, and metabolic health. So I've been posting a lot on my YouTube channel lately in shorts about uh, metabolic health. So check those out if you're interested in boosting your metabolism, changing your metabolic health. So those are all under my shorts and then also on Instagram, you can follow me there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button so you can be notified when I post new videos. I try to do them every Friday, but I don't make it every Friday, but at least if I don't post a long video, I'm usually gonna post a short with some tips for you. So today I'm going back to one of the um, kind of subscriber favorite topics of called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If you don't know anything about SIBO, please check out my videos. I will put a, a playlist. I have a playlist I put together. You can check that out and I will put that in the description. Um, so there's tons of information about the different kinds of SIBO. So basically you're dealing with potentially three different kinds of SIBO. So herbal... Oh, herbal. I'm talking about herbal antibiotics, <laughs> hydrogen SIBO, hydrogen sulfide SIBO, or um, what they call IMO now, methane SIBO, basically. It's what it used to be called. So those can mean very different things. I mean, they can have different, very different symptoms for people. It, classically, we would think of um, SIBO, methane SIBO as more constipation, but I've met plenty of patients that I've done the testing on and they actually have diarrhea. And so you can have both. And then hydrogen, we always thought of as diarrhea and hydrogen sulfide kind of maybe either. Um, but really, you just have to do the testing. And I know that's not simple, but you do have to do the testing to know what type you have. Um, I forgot to mention that I am a functional medicine doctor, for those of you who are new here, a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I've worked with hundreds in my practice on their gut health, and then thousands via the YouTube channel. So if you want to dive deeper into the YouTube channel, there's lots of videos on there, and if you want to check out my practice, it's at highlandshealthwellness.com. Okay, back to the content. So really testing is the best way to know if that's within your resources. It can get expensive, I know that. So um, I like to recommend the food marble for testing. If you have, if you don't know anything about that, check out my videos on that. It's a really interesting device that you breathe into and it can tell you after you do a prep diet and some, drink some special solution that morning of the test and you fast. You, it can tell you if you have methane or hydrogen SIBO. It cannot tell you hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Now, I, when I work with my patients, can sometimes tell from the way that the graph looks. Um, but that's what a harder one. It's usually a flatter line, hydrogen sulfide. So the TRIO test, I'll put that the lip, uh, in the description below. That is the best test to use if you're suspecting hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Now, what symptoms? Um, this is not a hydrogen sulfide SIBO video, but I'll just touch on in this, um, what symptoms can mean hydrogen sulfide. A lot of times, um, diarrhea, like I said, you could be very intolerant to um, certain foods that are high in sulfide. You could um, be not good with baths, with Epsom salt baths, I mean, in particular. Um, so there's some different kind of hints that can set off the, the, the thought that it might be hydrogen SIBO, or if you've been tested for the other two, didn't come out positive, but you still suspect that you have hydrogen sulfide SIBO, you might want to check out the TRIO test. So let's get on to the subject of today's video, which is brands for herbal antibiotics. So not everybody has to take rifaximin and neomycin, that classic kind of combo for, um, prescription antibiotics. They're very expensive and, um, they do have their own kind of, the neomycin more so, have their own kind of potential side effects. So check out my other videos on that where I've talked about treatment. So herbal is an option. Um, when somebody, a lot of my videos have been, or some of my videos have been on methane SIBO because I get a lot of questions about that. And that is the one that comes up the most commonly or is the most, in the majority of the time with the patients that I test in my practice, they're methane or they could be mix, mixed methane hydrogen. So with methane, we like to choose, I like to choose Alamed, which is a garlic extract. Um, it's a high dosing, and if you want to learn more about the different protocols I use and everything, you can check out my methane SIBO, um, not methane SIBO, sorry, understanding SIBO um, 
ebook. And I'll put links for that in the description. Very affordable. You can get it on Kindle. I think if you have a Kindle subscription, you can get it for free now. Um, or for a very affordable price on Kindle. So there's too much to go into in this video, but for my protocols, you can check it out on there. But I like to use Alamed because that's the most potent um, gar garlic extract you can get. Now, garlic extract, people are worried about when they have SIBO. They're like, I can't eat garlic. Why should I take a garlic extract? This is really isolated down um, garlic. So into like the extract, it's it's allicin, basically, A-L-L-I-C-I-N. So that is not going to cause that FODMAP reaction, that bloating gas kind of negative reaction that garlic itself causes. So I do like to use that in com combination with an herbal blend called Atranti that I'll have links for too. I'll have links for both of those where you can get um, those on sale through me. Um, but those are the best. That's the combo I typically start with for herbal antibiotics for um, methane dominant SIBO. Now, if it's hydrogen dominant SIBO, we want to go a different route. We usually want to go with berberine. And I really like Integrative Therapeutics berberine product. I will put that, it's berberine complex. I'll put that in my um, description also. So you want to go higher dose with that too. And, and you have to do, you, you have to do, you do have to take that um, three times a day. And then you can combine that for hydrogen dominant SIBO with neem. And my brand that I like to use, not my brand, but the brand I like to use for neem is neem plus, and that's by Ayush Herbals. And that's, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, A-Y-U-S-H. So I'll put that in the description also. So oregano is a great option for hydrogen dominant SIBO. Um, I like to use ADP, and that is by Biotics. Um, that's a great oregano product, and then Designs for Health also has a good oregano product. And then finally, for hydrogen sulfide, that can be trickier. You definitely don't want to use any berberine for hydrogen sulfide. Um, you definitely want to include bismuth, which is the main ingredient in Pepto-Bismol. But there's a better um, blend of it that I like um, that is called Biofilm Phase 2 Advanced phase two biofilm disruptor, something like that. I, it's a long name, but I will put it down below. And that has a special kind of bismuth that is better absorbed. And so you don't have to take the huge higher doses that you would with if you were taking like a Pepto-Bismol product. And the Pepto-Bismol product has a lot of, you know, the pink color to it, which is a fake artificial color. And then other ingredients that might not be very well tolerated. If, if that's all you can do, you can use that. But preferably you could use this other um, biofilm disruptor um, blend. And I'll put that in the description as well. So those are typically what I go to for, like I would use for hydrogen sulfide, bismuth mixed or not mixed with, and ADP. Now you can um, blend, you can do a compounded version of bismuth also. That's a little trickier. You got to work with a doctor who's doing compounding um, pharmacy prescriptions for you. So if you're not working with a doctor, that's not a great option for you. Um, and then some other things that have worked well for, for hydrogen um, SIBO is candibactin. Um, I know that's marketed for candida, and it does work really well for candida, but they did it, used it in, this, in Dr. Seibacher's, um SIBO studies, and she used a combination of candibactin AR and BR, so those can work really well together too. So check out my um, ebook if you want to learn more about the different combinations, you know, and, and it goes and you don't need to take notes on this video then and you can go, it goes way into um, diet, the, the testing for SIBO, um, diagnosing it, supplements to avoid, supplements to include eating, like foods you want to avoid, like in my um, diet video for SIBO. So it goes into it all. So you can check that out in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.